Now, a couple other special cases that we may have to consider. Here's an example right there. What if I wanted to figure out the equivalent resistance of this resistor network? Now, this is a little bit confusing uh, because it seems like we've got, uh, is it parallel? What's this 5 ohm resistor right there? How is that wired? Hmm, it seems like almost contradictory in some ways, but there's a real easy way to figure that out. And uh, here's what it is. If two points are at the same electric potential, there will be no current traveling from one point to the other point. So we might as well just consider them equal potential connected. We might as well just consider them connected. In other words, notice that if I've got current coming in here, whatever the potential is this way, it's a totally symmetric situation. The delta V across that resistor has to be the same as the delta V across this resistor. I'm going to label these A, B, C, and D, those different nodes. And notice that the V at B must equal the V at C just because of symmetry. It's got to be the same drop across there as, as across there. So VB equals VC. What we can read, what we can do is redraw this like this. Here's my current going in right there. And I've got A right here. I'm just going to redraw this like this. Here is my uh, 1 ohm resistor right here. And here's my other 1 ohm resistor right here. These two points, C and B, it's like they're connected. Doesn't even matter. I could put my that 5 ohm right there. Doesn't even both ends at the same part. There's going to be no current through that 5 ohm resistor at all. And then I've got my other network right over here, this 1 ohm and this 1 ohm right there. Both those 1 ohms and 1 ohm like that. So turns out that this thing doesn't even matter. I can just get rid of it entirely. And then what's the total resistance of this network? Well, I've got these two that are identical, again, in parallel. So this is going to be a 0 0.5 ohm resistor equivalent. And this one is two in parallel. Again, you just cut it in half if they're two identical ones in parallel. This will be 0 0.5 ohms. So my total resistance of this network, R equivalent, is just one ohm for that whole thing. Here is another important trick that you will need. Um, first question here is for this uh, setup right here, we get a 10 volt battery, three resistors, but notice that the resistors, their uh, ends are unconnected. The first question is what does A1 read? That of course is the easy question. Uh, because there's not a complete circuit, that must read zero. But here's the more interesting question. What is the voltage at X, Y, and Z? And here's three choices. Which is the correct order of voltages? Well, from last time, uh, the last example, we saw that if the uh, objects are connected, they're at the same potential, if there's just a conductor between them, and that means that there's no current between them. The inverse is true as well. If there's no current, then everything is equal potential. It's like an electrostatic equilibrium. So the voltage is the same at X, Y, and Z. Now here's the question. What is the voltage at X, Y, and Z? Is it 0 or is it 10 volts? Well, because all those are electrically connected to the positive end of the battery, which is at 10 volts, all the voltages at X, Y, and Z are at 10 volts relative to that negative terminal of the battery. Bottom line, when there's no current through a resistor, there's no voltage drop across it. Next up is when you have capacitors that are actually charging or discharging, uh, we have a few little tricks that we have to uh, keep in mind. And also, we are going to derive the actual charge on a capacitor uh, as a function of T. Because the charge on a capacitor, when it's charging, is time dependent. Now, part of this is necessary, just the concepts for the AP Physics 2 kids, uh, with the actual derivation of the time dependent charge equation is only for the C kids. But let's get the part that everyone has to know out of the way first. So, 
what's going on here is I have a uh, battery of EMF E, a resistor of resistance R, and a capacitor of capacitance C, and I've got a switch here that I'm going to close at time equals zero so that this starts to charge. What will happen is that current will move this way, I, off the positive end of this, and it will start accruing right here, and there'll be negative charges here as these positive charges leave here. Again, this is when this is closed. Um, and so there's going to be some amount of charge uh, dependent on time, which I'm going to call Q. Now, the thing is, when you first close this, first close that, um, what's going on? Like, what will be the current through here? Well, when this capacitor is empty right here, when this thing is totally empty, it's like a wide open field. There's plenty of room on it for these positive charges. In fact, it's as if it's a limitless field. There's really nothing pushing back. So in terms of current, when this capacitor is completely empty, the capacitor acts like a wire of no resistance simply because there is not going to be anything pushing this charge back. It's just like, yeah, come on on, there's plenty of room. So when you first close this thing right there, when that first gets closed, this acts just like a wire, and at t naught, at time equals zero, uh, the current is going to equal simply E over R, like as if that capacitor was just a wire. Now, when this thing is fully charged, when it's completely filled with as much charge as I can get, there will be a delta V across this of the same as uh, E, delta V equals E when it's fully charged, and it's completely filled. It's like a, uh, a, uh, a cattle pen that the cattle are completely filling it. There's no more room. What will be the current uh, when it's all done? When the cap is filled, i.e. when delta V across the cap equals the EMF, then the current will equal zero. There's no more room, no more charge can get on there. So when fully charged, the capacitor acts like open switches. Capacitors act like open switches, no charge can flow.